let's move ahead to 3.3. Check it out. What do we have here? Trig derivatives. We're going to learn the derivatives of all six trig functions. Just kind of continue in our exploration of derivatives of different types of functions. Okay. Let's do just a little bit of review. What are the six trig functions? Um, and we'll talk a little bit about notation too. So here they are sine of x, cosine of x, tangent x, cosecant x, secant x, and cotangent of x. And those are uh, the ways they are, you know, everything relates back to sine and cosine. Um, so if you remember, tangent of x is sine x over cosine of x. Uh, cosecant and secant are the reciprocals of sine and cosine and cotangent, the reciprocal of tangent. What else? Um, a little bit of notation. Um, just uh, if it's been a little while since you've worked with trig uh, very much. Um, so if we wanted to represent sine of x squared, we would do so, usually you do so like this. It looks a little bit neater. You put the squared between the sine and the x. Not to be confused with this sine of x squared, this would mean the square is only being applied to the x. Um, there's some, some inconsistencies with uh, some of that notation when you start abbreviating this way. So we'll see it here. What if the exponent was a negative one? So let's say you had the quantity sine x to the negative first. Well, that would be a reciprocal. It's kind of what we expect with a negative one. Uh, that'd be one over sine x, or you'd probably just think of it as cosecant x. If it was only on the x this way, well, that would mean the sine of one over x, or the sine, the, the negative one only applies to the x. Um, but if you write this with that negative one between the sine and the x, that means the inverse sine, or uh, more formally, we'd call it the arc sine of x. So when I said there was an inconsistency, it's between this one here and this one. So that means, you know, you're applying it to the whole thing. But this does not mean, you know, it's applied to everything. That means that's like our shorthand for the inverse sine. And really nowadays, I see this much more often than arc sine written out. Um, so it's just something to be aware of. Lastly, always use radians if you're plugging numbers into a trig function. Uh, there might be a really rare occasion where you've got degrees, but that would be obvious. If you're just plugging any number in, be sure that you are set, your calculator is set to radians. Okay, let's get into the derivatives. We're going to start with the derivative of sine x. We're going to do, we're going to discover this derivative by graphing. So I'm actually going to switch over to my paper here. And I'm just going to give a sketch of one period of sine x. So, you know, from pi to 2 pi and from negative one to one, and maybe we should graph pi over two, three pi over two, I think that'll work. So sine begins at the origin, comes up to one at pi over two, comes back down to zero, down to negative one, and then back to two pi. And it's got this action to it. It's nice, smooth curve like that. Okay. Uh, so that is f of x equals sine x. We're going to practice our sketching of derivatives. And when we do this, we might discover we recognize what the derivative will be. So we think about uh, this sketch, right? We see a couple of peaks. And 
valleys, right? So at these locations, the tangent line would be horizontal. Okay. What about at these extreme points? Of course, this, it doesn't stop there, right? Our function continues on. What would be the slope you know, for these segments? Well, we can tell the slopes are positive and then the slopes are negative and then the slopes are positive. It would be really, really helpful if we could figure out what the slope is right there at the origin, right here at pi, and then again at two pi. What I'm gonna do is jump over uh, to Desmos. And here I've got the graph of sine of x uh, right there. There's the first period, right? Two pi about right there. I wonder if we can figure out what the slope of that line is right at the origin, the slope of the tangent line. It's definitely positive, but like right, you know, we can tell right in the center of the wave, that's when the slope is the steepest, right? It's kind of it's kind of at zero and then it's building up and then starts to level off again. Let's see. Is it, you know, if we just graph a couple lines, maybe we can figure it out. Is it two? Is the slope of that line, that tangent line two? Well, definitely not. It's less than that. Um, is it one half? No. Is it just one? And yep, and you might have seen that when I was switching between them. The slope of the tangent line there is exactly one. That's that's pretty cool. Okay, let me come back to the graph. So we can tell right here that the slope through the origin is exactly one. Well, it would be the same at two pi, right? Because it's all oscillating the same way. And what about at pi? Well, it would have to be a slope of negative one. So just using these points, let's see if we can figure out the graph for the derivative. So let's see, one, negative one. All right, so I'll put the one, I'll put the negative one. Uh, and let's get pi and two pi and there and there, okay. So uh, at zero, it's got a slope of one. At pi over two, it's got a slope of zero. At pi, it's got a slope of negative one. At three pi over two, it's got a slope of zero. And at two pi, it's got a slope of one. And if you connect those dots, maybe this will look familiar. Right there, that derivative starts at one at pi, it's at negative one, that's cosine x. That's pretty amazing. The derivative of sine x is cosine of x. Wow. How awesome is that? That's pretty incredible. That it would work out so nicely. So think of that kind of like just sort of a derivative rule in itself just for sine x. Okay. Well, we figured out the derivative for sine x. Uh, next up, well, I guess we need to investigate the derivative for cosine of x. Now, as we look at the derivative of sine x, we think, wow, like, I wonder what the derivative of cosine x is. And, you know, the kind of the question comes up, will it, will the derivative of cosine x be sine of x, right? Let's find out. We've already got the derivative of cosine x, so let's create one more of these, <clears throat> excuse me. See what happens. We got pi 
2 pi. I'll just give you a hint. These slopes are negative 1 and positive 1. So let's find out. So there we've got a slope of 0. Here, a slope of negative 1. That's a terrible tangent line, but you get it. Uh, m equals 0, m equals 1, and m equals 0 again. So at, at uh, x equals 0, we're back to 0. OK, well, that's what happens with sine. Uh, but here, we're at negative 1. OK, OK, OK. At pi, we're back to 0. Here, we're at positive 1, and then back to 0. Here's what the graph is doing. Right there. Well, it's not sine of x, but oh, check it out. It's like the mirror image, it got flipped. This, the derivative of cosine, is negative sine x. It got, it all got flipped over the x axis. Well, not exactly what we were hoping for, maybe, but pretty good. The derivative of cosine of x is negative sine x. Um, now, we did this with drawings and so sketches, you know, and maybe you're like, ah, you know, is that really convincing? And I, I'd say, you know, they're, it, was, it was pretty convincing once we figured out um, the slope was one, right, for sine x. But if you'd like to see this done maybe a little bit more convincingly, you could convert, confirm, let's say, the derivative for sine of x uh, with the definition of the derivative. Um, you take the limit as h approaches 0 for sine of x plus h minus sine x over h. What you do, you'd have to apply a trig identity here to the sine of x plus h. Um, you could easily look that up. Um, and then, you know, you have to be, I think it's, it's kind of clever from there. There's some factoring um, and some work with that. Or, you know, you could look it up and, and check it out, how it's done from the definition, if you like. Um, cool. Okay. Uh, we're going to continue on. The next question is going to be tangent x. But let's do that in the next video.